everybody fulfilling that purpose, then the more you got better at it, the more juicy your life gets. And you get better at it for the rest of life, so life literally gets better for the rest of life. And you completely transform your relationship to aging. You have to remember it's a game. My passion, my source, my commitment is, my, my purpose is that people are at the source of things. That's why I'm having these conversations. Source and then joyful. And I just get better and better at it, and my life gets better and better. Now, it's the game I love to play. So if you love playing basketball, you love playing it. And sometimes you lose. Yeah, but, but you love playing it. So it's really important to get that you love, this is the game you love to play. And you're going to get better and better. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you won't get it over there. But you'll just love going for it. And you'll learn what was not effective. And you'll improve. Do you get that? Yeah. Then you create a business that is, that is an expression of that. Living an aligned life is to be, have you aligned with self. Create an endeavor that is aligned with who you are. Create um, the endeavor that's a, a project business. It also is aligned with the wealth the world wants and needs. If you have staff that everybody is aligned with the purpose of the endeavor. And the very last thing, find out what your mediums are. What do I mean by that? We're all artists. We're creators. And there's a guy in Toronto. I, look, he built a company from zero to $80 million. And he was miserable. And he's an incredible success, success in having small farms, get their stuff into grocery stores and still be family farms and all this. Like, his passion fulfilled. Why? Because we discovered what his mediums. Like, the, these are the, 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 the areas that you like to work, paint or sculpting. But, oh, it's like with the things you lose yourself, the things you love doing. He is creating solutions, finding solutions to problems, creating new ways of doing things, teaching people, elevating them. Those are the things that he loves to do. And then... How he built his business was doing those things. Now his business is big. He never gets to do those things because he's too busy running it, doing it. You get that? So you have to build your business. That at, at the beginning, you have to do a lot of things. But be self-aware and build it so in its architecture, you're always operating in your medium. Otherwise, not only will it start to falter, but you'll start to resent it because it's an architecture for you not doing what you love to do. So Chip was really great. So Coach Chip Wilson from Lululemon back before they went public. And when it got to a certain size, he goes, I don't want to run a stupid company. And he hired Bob Mears from Reebok and said, you run the company. He went back to being head of design. He picked that up on his own. You know, it was great. But so get your calling, have your endeavor in line, get your mediums and start to think from there. Then create a purpose for your company. It's probably not, there's who you are, but you, the company is part of you. You're bigger than that. That's who you want to be everywhere, your company and your family, everywhere. And you know, imagine how your relationship is going to go is if you're all, you're, the purpose of your partner is for you to deliver molten lava to them all the time. <laughs> you're like, I'm keeping you. <laughs> right. So then you, you do the same work, which is I would ask you, okay, for your company, with your whole, what would make your heart sing if your company left every customer with what? With what, Right. With what, in, what intention if delivered to them? So I'm going to give you a really quick example. A year and a half ago, one of my clients called me and said, I've got to drop these projects. I have a new one. His father is Fernando Botero, who's a famous artist of Colombia. He's one of like, Colombia's most famous people. And he said the Chinese have asked for an exhibit, and we've got to do it like next month. And so we did the work to create the same question I asked for you. We say, okay, we get the three, four people key in the company. Can be done with just you or that. But the point is we created the purpose of the company. And they said, well, it always starts off with the product and service. Let's do this with art and this with art. But we, human beings, there's no product and service. So we kept going. We kept do, uh, they came back to me. We enrich lives through art. I said, remove your product and service. Oh, we enrich lives. So the mission and the purpose of the company became enriching people's lives. And they're just lit up by that. So then... This is the way we work, uncompromising. He said, okay, we're going to have every single person that we contact in this company, has, we have to enrich their lives. In the ways that people never imagined, even the guys that handle the shipping at the warehouse of the art, the guys who do this, and, and they're like, what? He said, no, if we are enriching people's lives, we're enriching, we start with the customer, what we want, and then we apply it everywhere. Your lives have to be enriched, the staff, this. And the results were, two months later, we produce a world record exhibit in Beijing, Two months after that, we shattered it and produced a world record exhibit in Shanghai. We got emails. This is not usual anyway, but out of China, it's like unheard of that from, from warehouses and shipping guys who are like, it was amazing doing business with you. We had, um, you know, I remember the head of the, of the project called me like in tears from uh, Shanghai because they took on an initiative or how do we enrich life like this and let's do kids and children. He said, you can't even walk in the Shanghai exhibit because there's children everywhere and they're lying on the floor and they're sketching the art and they're just having the best time. 
And they had a professor, of, one of the most uh, respected professors of art in the world saying, this is unprecedented, like a living artist, nothing like this has ever happened. And, but you know, we didn't set out to produce any one of those results. You get that? We only went out to stay true, to stay true to enriching people's lives and we let it go wherever it went. So the summary is that if you, it's, our work is not about where are you getting to, it's about where are you coming from. So if you get that spot like today and start to come from there, there's no more path. It's just only developing the consistency of coming from there. Whatever you do, put notes up, this, that, get better at it, create an architecture an environment that's about that versus what it's about now. It's only increasing the percentage, there's no path. Then this stuff becomes a huge, it, it, you multiply the effectiveness of the guidance and of it because it's inside of a really clear path, suddenly it becomes so much more useful, like, oh, it helps me get grounded, helps me, helps me stay in my calling, right? Helps me to remove the distractions, and then everything kind of comes together. So that's the short version.